So my first guest today is a major ally of the president in the days they were in the trenches fighting military and clamoring for democracy. And also we have a second segment that you will find very exciting. Inside Sources, we'll be right back. My guest today is one of the more eminent Nigerian politicians, especially during the Second Republic, an active party organizer uh, who has also remained a notable figure of NADECO and uh, other eminent uh, associations that have been pushing for democracy and pushing for restructuring and devolution in Nigeria. I'd like to welcome today to Inside Sources, Mr. Hayo Opadokun to Inside Sources. Good afternoon. Thank you, sir. The first question that I would like to ask you is, if you look at where Nigeria is today, can you say that we are on course to a great Nigeria that people like you have articulated and you know the vision that many of us Nigerians have? Do you think as things stand today, Nigeria is on course to that greater uh, greater Nigeria. If what you are saying is whether Nigeria is on course, yes, I will say regrettably that Nigeria is not on course. Okay, so so why do you say that, sir? In all ramifications, so, say social, economic, and political matters. In fact. Rather than being a developing nation, we are an underdeveloping nation. And Nigeria has been a great test disappointment to the black race who have looked up to Nigeria to today for leadership. We have been a abysmal failure because we cannot govern, govern ourselves, so we cannot provide leadership to the black world. Okay. In spite of the fact that Nigeria is endowed with natural and human resources, those who have captured Nigeria as their private enterprise had subverted the hopes and the aspiration that Nigerians had at independence. Much more guilty in this wise is the fact that the institution called the Nigeria Army, which staged a military coup d'etat and violently overthrew Alaji Abba Katafa Balewa's government on January 15th, 1966, has been, has been most guilty of false subversion that are taking place in the country. By that military push, the military subverted, stunted our growth, arrested our growth, and reduced us to nothingness since then. In fact, what could be regarded as the article of faith that binds the various ethnic nationalities together called the Federal Constitutional Arrangement, was abrogated and suspended on January 15, 1966, and, the sub and substituted for it series of military decrees from Decree 1, 2, 9, up, 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 to, up to the rest of them to centralize and unitarize Nigeria to today. And because of that, Nigeria has not been able to find us fit. And I, 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 yes. I get your point about the, uh, the role of the military um, in, in, in subjugating the democratic uh, development of the country uh, in 1966, you know, and then later in 1984. Now, the military has since left power since 1999. So, so this year is 25 years after the military has left power. 
what is left to be done uh, uh, between now and then, in your view, that has uh, made us not to be to be in the proper place? I hope you. I hope you are not under a wrong, wrong, wrong understanding of the of the chemistry of what the whole thing. With this so this so called this so called twenty five years, who are the prime movers and shakers of, of what are the, of, of the situation? Because we we succeeded in pushing the military back to the barracks, they went on their own terms and imposed upon us their former commander in chief in the person of General Basanjo, who ruined Nigeria. Give me just one thing that Obasanjo did to promote democracy, democratization, and democratic features in the country. In the, in the country. Everything, most of what he did, were all anti-democracy. Uh, uh, directing, shooting at sites of innocent people. And when we cautioned him that no reasonable investor will bring his money into a country where people can be, could be shot at sites. He had no, he had no regrets. Look, when the man in Zamfara started the Sharia, we told President Obasanjo that Nigerian law ought not to permit for his, a, another constitution. He said it was a political Sharia. 12 states in the north took after him. What is the resultant consequence today? We have two laws in some, in some part of the country and they could get away with anything. In fact, the so-called uh, um, Sharia, Sharia uh, police, they could, they could go ahead to destroy the bottle of, of, of beer sold by some people in their in their in their, their different states, and yet the value added tax that are collected from taking of beer, they are willing, they are ready, eager to share part of that thing, part part of that part of the vat, unashamedly. I've never seen a thing like that. Mm. And when Obasanjo was going to leave. Rather than allow democracy to thrive, he looked for somebody whom he knew that was medically challenged. He wanted to be governing us by remote control. And because that fellow, as it will happen, all of, all of us are human beings, be, 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 never, never lasted anything. And the money we went to, to bring at the pain of death, called President Dr. Jonathan took over. And because that one also will not listen to him, eh, he went on the offensive with him. And then the next person who was going to govern was another former commander-in-chief of the army named uh, General Muhammad Buhari. So what are you talking about, about democracy? That civilians have been, have, 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 have been governing Nigeria. The, the military that are taking over since General Refutin, 1966, are still in control of the system. So, they don't, we, we, people like me are not, we will not be deceived. We are not deceived at all. Okay, sir. So, uh, you know, your, your point is well made. Uh, so now, we have uh, in the office uh, President Bola Ahmed Chinubu, uh, who clearly has no uh, military antecedents. So, what do you think should happen going forward so that we can put this country on the right trajectory? Well, I believe that President Bolatinumbu has all that it takes to do the right thing. The most important business that he has to do is to return Nigeria to a federal constitutional governance. We secured our independence under a federal constitutional governance. But the military having subverted 
abrogated, suspended that constitution and unitarized and centralized governance. They have in the process made Nigeria to operate policies that produces inequity, injustice, discrimination of, of various of, of various kinds and disobedience, flagrant disobedience to the rule of law. Mm. So I believe that if Nigerians are up to ensure that gov gov those who are in government perform, President Bola Tinubu, who was part of us in the trenches, have no other abandoned business or most important business to do than to restore Nigeria to a federal constitutional governance. And more to reach, he, he has another advantage that his own party in their own manifesto, Article 7 of, the, of his party's APC manifesto, enjoys them to return to, to restore Nigeria to federal constitutional governance. I admit, admit that the state of the economy is unbelievably intolerable. The, the death of poverty and deprivation that is in, in our country today cannot be tolerated further. Mm. I believe that he has the technical and, and knowledge and expertise to quickly enunciate, initiate, and implement socio-economic policy that can uplift Nigeria out of the current doldrum that we have. For example, his efforts over natural, natural gas ought to have borne fruition, ought to have given hope to Nigerians by now. It ought to be to have been worked through that Nigerians will not be paying such heavy sum of money that they are, they are, they are paying to fuel their, to fuel their vehicles. And as a result of, 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 of this so-called unprecedented, uh, um, hike in, in petroleum and, and diesel, food remains costly and everything is above the uh, average span of the ordinary man. I believe that he could do that. But all, all those things with the bread and butter politics, the most important thing is for him to invite ethnic nationalities, leaders, to sit down together. We have the 1963 constitution available. Then the pro-democracy constitutional conference drafts, which he was part of, is available for us mm. so that we can sit down together within, within without, without wasting time and restore Nigeria to federal constitutional governance. That is when we would say that Huri, mm. uh, Daniel has come into judgment. One of us who had been, who has been with us in the trenches had, had come to right the wrong that have been wrong to, 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 to uh, against Nigeria in the last 40, 40 years or so. Mm. And, and, and certainly, uh, Mr. Kwaloku, I, I, I also shared uh, those sentiments and old how the hope uh, that President Tinubu will actually uh, be able to, uh, to, to give us uh, a, a, a true federal constitution. But let me ask you, sir, what is the best way of doing that? Uh, is it true uh, the president sending a, a bill, an executive bill, to the National Assembly? I have the bill to Pronaco's uh, document, you know, the, the, the Pronaco uh, recommendation. Right. Yes. No, I'm, so I'm, I'm now asking you, do you right. think the president should convoke another formal conference or should the president just put together all the available uh, uh, documents and recommendations, uh, some of which he was a participant, and send an executive bill for a new constitution 
to the National Assembly. How do you think the president should proceed? My, 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 my recommendation is that be, because when the British came, they related with the ethnic nationalities, not with any other group of people. President Tinubu should now call the ethnic nationalities and their leaders. And let us have together this 1963 constitution, the Pronaco document, and any other document that might be of relevance. Let us, those ethnic nationality leaders and those who have been dealing with these matters are more capable. They will be of greater use than a jamboree and then so that we can then sit that together with him then after having produced the a, 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 a worthwhile a, 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 a draft constitution which he can send as an executive bill that would be a, the what i will i will i will, I will su su suggest okay uh, 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 thank you for that point um i, I want us, us to also discuss you know, still on the future of Nigeria, the role of political parties. I know that uh, you were one of the leaders uh, in the organization of, of, of parties, especially in the Second Republic. You played a major role, especially in the Second Republic that we all know, uh, in the organization of the UPN. So I wanted to ask you two specific areas in the area of recruitment of leadership in the parties and in the area of funding the parties. What insights can you give us when you compare what happened in the Second Republic and what is happening now? So, so yes, what I, 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 I don't, I don't want to offend any, anybody, but I, I, I must say with all sense of responsibility, that since the military adventure in, into political governance as initiated by Babangida called Babangida politics, they've totally subverted the essence of party politics and its management. In the First and Second Republic, Party apparatchik were in control of the management of the of the party at the office. For example, all officers elected normally don't operate at the party headquarters. Mm. They come in occasionally to transact their businesses and then they go away. For example, we had a director of publicity and research in the Second Republic called Chief MC Chik Ajiluchuku. We have a director of organization called Chief Ebenezer Babatokwe. who people like me assisted as assistant director. So we were in charge of running the party. When the party gives directives through the elected officers, we carried those directives into operations. But today, what the military politics have done is that people, the so-called elected people, were the ones sitting there in offices throughout. And that's why you have the, the, the crisis that you have. And because they were parasitized created by the Bangladesh government called political parties, you couldn't expect much from them than what you, you now have. The situation where the political parties Manifestos and constitutions were written by the same set of people. 
just one to the right, one to the left. And so there are no, no difference, no ideological background upon which each party was going to base its activities, its understanding of socio economic and political matters upon. And that's what has, what, what has happened. For example, uh, in this uh, military politics that they are, they are going through, what you find is that most of the things have been so unitarized and centralized to the extent that they, they, have, they, they, they hardly have, have any added value from anybody. Let me tell you that one, one of the evil, evil, evil leftovers of the military in their centralization and unitarization of Nigeria is the fact that when they were going to leave, that General Murtala Mohammed, when he selected and picked some people whom he called wise men, he, 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 he gathered about 50 to, together. But Chief Obama Mewolo rejected his offer. So he, 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 he remained 49 under the leadership of Chief Afera Williams. His maiden address to that committee was to find a suitable government system that is akin to the military organogram where power flow from the commander in chief. And that's what you have in the, in the executive presidential system. Executive presidential system is very unsuitable for a country like ours, which is an indigenous country with indigenous people, an heterogeneous society with different religion, different languages, different customs, different traditions, different artifacts, different folklore, different mores, different morals, etc. The parliamentary system upon which we secured our independence remains most suitable for us. Mm. And is cost effective because you will have only one election. Every federal constituency will be contested for by members of different political parties. A, a, part, a party that has the highest number of elected people will have their leader whom they will promote to be the, uh, uh, the, uh, the leader of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the house. And then the titular president will call upon him to form government. It is among these legislators that have been elected they will create a cabinet out of that parliament, which will now become executive. So all of them will debate, they will resolve matters which the cabinet will go and implement. And because the, the ministers are, are equal members of the cabinet, Mm. All matters pertaining to each constituency that are brought into, into, into the parliament will be discussed in the presence of the ministers. So it makes for faster, quicker resolution of, of events. The, the prime minister, who is the head of government, is not far away. He's a member of the parliament. Yeah. Mm. And so, government work is done in such a way that makes the government to be much more relevant, much more responsive to the yearning and the aspirations of the people. It is not the, like the current one, where once the governor is elected, he has no, he has no reason again to go to, to visit the, 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 the legislature. The president, as soon as he is elected, on, on, until the time that he comes to lay down his budget, that's the time that the, it interacts or, or they, or, 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 unless they have their private interactions. Mm. 
Mm. And it makes the executive presidential system to be too prohibitive, very or, or, or irresponsive, and irresponsible too. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. Mm. Yeah. In the American system, which they copied, the Congress and this, uh, that is the House of Rep and, and the Senate is so uniquely positioned and it's been very, very effective in, in serving as a, uh, a check, an effective check on the executive. Not more, not, not in the Nigeria, in the Nigeria setting. I agree with you, sir, uh, that the parliamentary system of government will serve Nigeria better. And good thing, uh, there is a bill that is currently on in the House of Representatives that is uh, working on bringing the parliamentary system back. But I wanted to ask you a question on how political parties are funded today. What we see is that political parties use the nomination uh, process to raise money. So, for instance, uh, for the presidential election, a, a political party, we ask the aspirants to bring as much as a hundred million, 150 million, and, and, and so much, you know, so that they, before they can run in the primaries. Now, I wanted to ask you, was this the way it was done in the Second Republic? Is this the proper way to fund political parties? No. Uh, yeah, what they, are, what they have done here is to encourage pol uh, political aspirants to go and organize themselves as, as armed robbers, to go and break into the central bank vaults and bring that money. Since they know that they will have to bribe the the electorates to vote for them, by putting 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 naira into their, their, they've even gone, they, they've even go, gone, uh, digital now that, that they can distribute, uh, ATM card, ATM card with money to, to people. They, they go, they, they, they have to bribe the electoral officers to the tilt. They have to bribe the judiciary. In order for them to be pronounced as winners, yeah. so it is a it's a total bizarre thing, a situation where people leaders are no more elected by people for a particular period of time. It, it remains an it remains an, an inglorious situation. Mm. Come to think of it. Come to think of it. Yes, sir. No one governor, no one governor in the Second Republic who said that he, said he spent 10,000 naira of his own money to become a governor in any of the Yobo states. Mm. By your antecedents and your participation, the party lead leaders will decide who will be the governorship candidates. Who will be the presidential candidate? And then once you are once you are nominated that way, it is the, it's the duty of the party to fund the, the political process, the campaign, and the likes. Nobody again will be going to organize bazaar entertainment for anybody because you are attending rallies. Mm. Nobody will will really, and then the the party leaders. They know how to find effective, reliable, trustworthy uh, 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 agents to man the polling post for them. But today, everything is about money. The highest bidder. Before you can contest election, some of our leaders who are in position of authority, they'll be asking, is he, is he, is he, is he is he fully loaded? Mm. Does he have the resources? Otherwise, you are not you are not fit and proper. 
to be able to, be able to run. So we are not having the best among us to, to run for political office. Mm. Th 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 thank you very much. You know, uh, just a last question um, uh, on that, you know, and then I I'll let you go, uh, Mr. Padukun. So what do you think we can do to correct that practice that you have just described in the parties? Must we uh, uh, make an amendment to the electoral laws in such a way that parties are disallowed from raising funds that way? The, ahead, mil the military undermined us and they're still undermining us. But the military, when, the military when, is no more when in power. When Babangida politics came and he asked us to go and form political parties. We formed different political parties. My own party, People's Solidarity Party, was number one. We never gave money to anybody. People just brought in their resources. They opened offices in their different states, employed party apparatchik to run the offices. But since the, the military came and said it was forming two political parties. So they monetize and commercialize party politics. What can be done, mm -hmm. in my suggestion, is that we need to go back to, to the uh, critical base from which we were cigared by the military. People ought to be allowed to fund their political parties without the intervention of the state. Nothing stops anybody, a group of people in a local government to form a political party of their, of their, of their, of their choice and campaign to, do, to run the local government in a particular way. And if the people in that, in that local government believe, believe in them, they win. Mm. So, but a situation where you say you must have political offices in two thirds of the state of the, of the of the country. What you are asking people to do is impossible. That is why you 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 are, you are, you are find many uh, you, you are find many decent people who are interested in, in party politics today. And it's to the, to the shame of, of, of Nigeria. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Yopadokun, for coming to Inside Sources. And thank you so much for your uh, contributions. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Yeah. And it's good to know uh, that the president is engaged actively on the issue of the Constitution. And many of us believe that if there is one thing that President Tinubu will do for Nigeria, it will be a new constitution.